you mentioned you like the t-shirt. I also like this one. Have, I, I pardon me for not knowing, have you worked with Roger? No, unfortunately not. So this is still a bucket list item? Yeah, uh, most certainly <laughs> is. Most certainly is. But, you know, these, the, this kind of cinematographer, sometimes you don't even notice them. Sometimes you don't even, you know, they don't interfere. They, they, they know what they're doing. They stay outside. They kind of, they're usually very quiet. And, and I love them. What's interesting is, um, pardon me for going off on a Roger tangent, but I found it fascinating that he only shoots with one camera, no coverage, and like what but he... Of course they shoot coverage. Well, I, he was saying, when I spoke to him and with Denis, he was saying they usually just do one camera. He shoots, or that's, um, pardon me for saying that, that's usually the director's choice sure. anyway. But you shoot coverage with one camera as well, otherwise you have nothing to cut. Completely. Um, let me switch off of Roger. No, that's I talk, interesting. I could talk all day about <laughs> Can Roger. Can you stick to that? Right. <laughs> um, I just want to start by saying uh, I love this movie. Thank you. And it is, uh, were you sort of like, you? so you get the script, or you, you, they're telling you about the movie, and then they're like, and you're not playing the villain. Fine. Uh, um, but that, uh, that's not what I'm reading, looking for anyway, so that's fine by me. Let's stay with Roger. <laughs> Let, let's stay with Roger. <laughs> Uh, and and the difference of one camera shooting to how we shot Alita. Awesome. There were, I think, 36 or 46 cameras installed in the ceiling uh, for motion capture alone. There were eight cameras that uh, were hand-operated to get the lay of the land. And there were two big 3D cameras, or sometimes only one, which would be the equivalent of, of uh, you know, Roger's one camera. And you, we could have shot Alita on that one camera. It just would have taken a little longer. And um, I, I kind of concur with Roger to, to you know, make that one look deliberate. Um, but all that other th other stuff, all the other cameras were there to capture performances. Not necessarily mine, because what I did, one camera could have done. But what all the others did, meaning the motion capture, that is, that is a more involved process. The result of which now is that you get Rosa, even though she doesn't completely look like Rosa, even though her body is not Rosa's body, but a, a cyborg body, yet it is Rosa. Completely. In, completely. Yeah. Every little twitch, every little mannerism, every little, you know, um, look out of the corner, you even f can see what she thinks, if you know what she thinks, as I do, because I work with her, uh, you can see that. Even though you would, you would uh, from, a, from, a, from a still, you would say that's a computer-generated image. It's not. No, no, I, I, I think the visual effects in this are, are groundbreaking. They're unbelievable. I have to ask you, though, so you're on set, you're filming in this environment. There, there has to be an element of even you know, with James and with Robert telling you about the movie, there has to be an element of you're using your imagination to imagine what this is finally going to be. What was it like seeing the film for the first time and seeing the finished VFX? Because they're so insane. Yes, uh, well, they're, they're, they're insane. Yeah, possibly they're insane, but um, no, they're actually pretty sane. Right. Uh, they're just very, very accomplished. Um, um, and, you know, one does not mean the other. Um, but but um, it, 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 the, the employment of the very, very elaborate visual effects still serve to tell the story. Meaning the story as I knew it and as we were trying to, to work on it um, remained the same. The human behavior remained the same. 
the 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 visual effects were just uh, a vehicle to tell the story and and really just they are not the the over overriding element in this story it's a story it's still you know smarts and hearts and um, human communication even though it happens mm, between cyborgs at times but it's still you know real people um, acting and reacting and communicating with each other so so when I saw the finished product I thought it was fantastic and I was interested in the story yeah the story is is great one of the things that I, I really love about this is that I'm not a huge fan of 3d but I think the 3d in this is exceptional I agree. Uh, what can you sort of talk about that as like to, that you do want to see this in 3d well you, um, depth of vision is um, actually a, a dramatic device okay in in an image it looks cool but if you discover that you can look all the way down and still see something that is interesting and possibly relevant to the story then it's employed as drama and um, that's how it should be because otherwise you could so we see it flat and get the same thing and it's never flat anyway you know there there is depth in 2d as well but here the depth is tangible physical and um, you know if you look down that street of Iron City and you see people of all kinds and um, and origin and uh, appearance all mixed together and you look further into the next plane and further into the next plane and it still happens like that you say well maybe that would be something to aspire to to have a world where we're all together all the way into the full depth of field and the mix of everybody and nobody considers it extraordinary or you know um, um, unusual. <laughs>